Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel, right? So week one of Eternity of Pain has finished and so has the community challenge with $1,500 total rewards pool. So every week we're going to be giving away $100 to three summoners who do their very best in one of the three categories that we come up with and prove that they are the best of the best, the fastest of the fastest, and uh, those are the people who can claim that they never get hit. Either way, the point is, week one is finished. We have to announce categories for week two, and we have to congratulate winners of week one and check out their gameplay. Right, so first and foremost, Categories for week two Icarus fight. First two are exactly the same. We're not changing the first two. Fastest unboosted solo, lowest PI solo. The third category is changed to something more concrete and less subjective. And that is going to be biggest single unboosted hit in that fight. You're not required to solo. You are required to record a video from start to finish to show that you're unboosted. And obviously, you need to deal a single highest hit. How you do it, it's entirely up to you. But best of luck to anybody after attempting these challenges for week two. Again, we <laughs> will to I actually need to correct this. Um, week two winners will be announced a day after week two finishes. And uh, well, best of luck suffering through this fight i must say that icarus fight i feel like is much more friendly for these type of challenges because you do not have to rely on well you don't you are not as dependent on the bane so once again best of luck right now the moment that a lot of you definitely have been asking and waiting for the winners of week one and we actually do have one guy one person who gets two rewards so one guy, a person in this community gets $200 this month. And we have another $100 prize. So fasted unboosted solo goes to Sam. Then we have lowest PI solo goes to Jill Matt with guillotine 2099 with PI of 6495. And meme solo also goes to Jill Matt with a six star civil warrior. Right, so let's get to all three of these video clips and show exactly how all these very impressive entries worked out. It's worth pointing out that before Sam submitted the 41 second go with Hercules, we had two people that were tied for the first place with 49 seconds. So this submission, I think day before last, basically just um, took it home <laughs> from them. Right. So we can start with the Hercules clip because that is only 41 seconds. So we can see that there are no boosts applied at all. And uh, Sam or the Interceptor, because he does have a YouTube channel of his own, uh, went in guns blazing with his six star rank for Hercules. And obviously the mission there is just very simple. Get in your feats of power quickly as possible do not worry about your hp just try and maintain to be as aggressive as you can now there was a nice cheeky light attack in order to position yourself for that uh, heavy and getting two feet of power immediately another sweet heavy intercept now immortality has been triggered and you just have to go all out here another very sweet intercept when opponent is not cooperating you just need to push on forward he goes into level two and now this is the key part, that level, uh, that stun there stuck and that stun allowed him to completely blitz through the finish. So that is how you make that crossbones fight your absolute biznatch. Now we're going to go with the lowest PI solo and many people were attempting with guillotine 2099. Right, I do think the full video one second. There we go, because initially when I downloaded, it did seem to have two fights in it, but it's fine. It's fine. Let's get to it. This clip does seem to be a bit. Uh, well, it's probably my PC who's doing that. It's probably my PC. That's a bit slow here, 
but uh, let's check it out so it is four star guillotine 2099 and it is a full solo we did see that there are no boosts applied and uh, obviously the thing with guillotine is that you're going to be doing very very little damage for majority of the fight until you properly get her ramped up once you do get past 100 hits uh, that is when you start doing damage we can see that he did not actually apply any of the pre-fights for this fight and there was definitely some masterful combo manipulation kind of like timing involved and also some great great intercepts now he is uh only 29 30 hits in that single tick of bane already did so much damage i can only imagine how frustrating it would be to try and get this fight recorded just to get screwed over by bane I know a teammate of mine spent over half an hour in a fight and then just basically got done in by Bane and just uh, could not deal with that. That's why I do hope that there are even more submissions for week two because Bane will not be a factor. Here we have Crossbones. And again, two ticks down to 41%. Two ticks of that Bane and immediately such a huge, huge amount of damage. That was the first mess up recording because I, I thought that he included two of these. So my bad. So he's going to go back in again. Uh, I should have probably cut this out. My apologies, but we're just going to fast forward a bit further in the fight here. And here we're going to have the actual solo attempt. So we all just saw exactly how punishing this fight is for anybody who did attempt it. And it definitely took a lot of work and dedication and patience and deter determination so as we can see initially guillotine does virtually no damage there there's just no damage being dealt but that's the upside of guillotine because once she does ramp up she does incredible amount of damage now we just saw another incredible example of slowing down your combo in order to manipulate the pain timer that was definitely a beautiful display, exactly of a great amount of skill. And here we go, another one. Good transfer, sweet, not a single tick of damage, because obviously those have very large amount of consequences, very costly consequences. And at this point, Crossbones is only at 95%. But again, this fight is going to finish quicker than people, you know, quicker than it looks at this point, I would say. Because we're 98 hits in and Crossbones is still at 93% health. Now, however, that we have reached past a 100 hit mark, the damage is going to start climbing quite quicker because every hit is going to be dealing extra energy damage extra burst damage and by spamming those level twos obviously you do amp up your combo meter quite quicker i think level two is what seven or nine hits another masterful transfer of bane there definitely very very skilled play 138 hits it is quite exciting because he only does have 43 percent health at this point there is not a much room for error left now, the good thing about Bane, as I always say, is it does become more and more forgiving the lower opponent's health goes. So the deeper you are in the fight, it does take you away for less because it is tied to how much health both players do have. And 73%. Uh, <laughs> so we definitely can see a significant increase in damage in these last 80 or so hits comparatively speaking so there he uh, again hits the crossbones block to get him past the bar of power to gain another opening does get a beautiful bane transfer and again very luckily that crossbones and this is almost like a dream ai i can just only imagine how many attempts it must have taken to have the crossbones throw those level ones so so obediently 
that definitely was not my personal experience when I was streaming and using six star rank three champions against him. And again, he just throws at level one. He does take a tick, but now we saw that a single tick only took away like 5% health compared to 10 plus percent health initially. So the Bane is not as potent anymore. So he's going to go here for level one to get in a transfer. Unfortunately, he does take one single tick of Bane damage, which again dealt another 5% or so. But now at this point, Crossbones is down to 34% and you can definitely see the light at end of the tunnel, I would say. So he does utilize level one to get Crossbones out of two bars of power territory and being forced to try and dex that level two, which is definitely a very helpful ability that Guillotine does have in this fight here. And uh, now we can see that every hit is dealing a ton of extra damage. Now, unfortunately, Crossbones here doesn't quite cooperate, but that region comes in clutch. And even though he did take Bane for some longer amount of time, that region does push him back all the way up to 44% health. He goes in, drops a level 2, and each hit is now dealing like 4000 plus extra damage, and he only has 1% health, and there he goes, gets in that solo. Well played, definitely a great fight. And now the last one. <laughs> the last one is actually the longest clip. The last one is the craziest, the longest clip. And that is with Sil Warrior. The thing about Sil Warrior is that he does reduce opponents' bleed and poison ability accuracy by 25%. I was not entirely sure whether that interaction would or should work in this fight because Crossbone's ability accuracy is not meant to be able to be reduced. Now, here he did get to his five <laughs> armor ups before starting the strike, Crossbones. But the great thing now with Civil Warrior is that you can hit the block and you can hit uh, him directly because it is both bleed and poison ability accuracy. So it completely shuts down Biohazard as long as you do have at least four of these armor up buffs. That is also, by the looks of it, there, rank three Civil Warrior. It must be one of those lines for defense rank ups, my name. It must be one of those lines for defense rank ups because Civil Warrior is a quite nasty defender now in uh, Alliance Wars, or was, should I say, on that uh, um, unstoppable armor tactic. But uh, the trick, <laughs> the key, the trick, so to speak, is also that uh, he can't convert his armor ups in Furies. This is like one of the biggest downsides for Civil Warrior, where if you do want access to his utility, you cannot access the damage. But here we are, nonetheless, he uses level 3 to transfer Bane in a perfect time as well. And again, so long as he keeps enough armor ups on himself, he will be able to, you know, avoid any and all bleeds and poisons. Again, I'm not entirely sure if this is meant to work like that, but if it isn't, it's on Kabam, it's not on us. <laughs> and it still is incredibly, incredibly hard fight here. So the man definitely is earning his $100 the hard way, or in Matt's case, $200. So here we are again, that Crossbones is not quite as cooperative this time around, but a level well-timed level two does the job there and uh, gets that crossbones past the bar of power once again. Another perfect Bane transfer. Here we can appreciate that he's still at perfect full yellow bar. Crossbones is at 70% at this point, and he's still at a perfect yellow bar. Hasn't taken a single tick of Bane, hasn't taken a single hit in his block or to the face, obviously. So he's definitely playing extremely well, very gifted, very skilled player, which is the entire point of these challenges. Now he is going to go in here once again, gets in a perfect transfer. Again, demonstrates that extremely um, difficult ability to slow down your combo just enough so you can have a perfect Bane transfer. I think that definitely was one of the factors why he was able to uh, do both of these fights as well as he did. Still, Crossbones at 61% of 
he's still at the full yellow bar. That is definitely an impressive display there. Another level 2 brain transfer. But, you know, it's easy to always get lost in the downsides of having Bane node. But in this case, we can see that pretty much the entire find that Crossbones is also ticking for 135 damage passively in background. Now, I know that is not quite a lot, but uh, it still all adds up throughout the fight because he's taking 270 damage every single second. Then, you know, 10 seconds, that's 2,700 damage. And then in a minute, that would be what? 212, 16,000 damage, something like that, every single minute. Still something. Now there, he did make a mistake. Unfortunately, immediately with that mistake, he lost about 40% of his health. But he's still winning that HP race. He's still definitely winning that HP race. Gets in another great pain transfer. Pushes that crossbones. Uh, past the bar of power, bets out the level 1, very well, goes for his level 1 this time around, um, 45%, man, it, it is quite crazy to see this, knowing how much, uh, you know, all of us struggled with this fight, again, it, it just accents even more how great of a player you would have to be in order to be able to do this fight with like a civil warrior and a four star guillotine. And come on, let's carry on. He gets again very well timed vein transfer at a perfect moment. We, have, we are entering the last third of the fight. He goes for level two there, drains the power completely of that crossbones. He does have 13 armor ups. Gets in a sweet dashback intercept. Again, he does need to be careful not to convert those armor ups into furies, I would say, unless he does have a level 1 ready. Technically, he could get it done there. Now, we can see that the Bane did some damage now, but he remained composed, didn't panic. And again, this is coming down to the wire. This is coming down to the wire because that it's not getting an opening. So he's nearly taken an entire cycle of Bane damage. But obviously with the six star rank three champion, the Bane is nowhere near as punishing as it would have been in, uh, in the previous fight with that four star guillotine. On top of that, that crossbones is only at 23% health as well. So he's going to go here for... Level, no, he, he isn't going for level 2. Fortunately, he did take a hit on a block, which let Crossbones <laughs> recover some health, which is always frustrating when you are fighting so hard. The fight was going so smooth up until this moment, and here we can see that the AI is just refusing to cooperate with him, making this, this much closer of a finish than it should be. And he does get hit here, so he is going to go for a level 3. And again, all of a sudden, for first time ever in the fight, he's actually losing the HP fight by 5%. We're going to have a crazy, crazy photo finish here. Every HP matters at this point. Every HP matters here. And now he got, he's down at 11%. Crossbones is at 15 You can definitely take this, but it is close. This close. I can only imagine how amazing it feels when you do, however, get in that solo at the very end after such a long, long, close fought battle. Oh, well, here we are. He got himself to level 3 once again. And probably try and save that level 3 for a Bane transfer whenever he does need it. Crossbones is at 5%. Come on, come on, you silly crossbones. Takes a hit and a block. Crossbones get back 5 to 5%. 5 Does get in an intercept sweet. 4% on that crossbones. Come on, man. And again, another hit and a block, and crossbones does get his regen. 
come up and back in, but it won't matter because he's going to finish this fight with Civil Warrior at 6% health. How dope is that? How dope is that fight? There we go. Civil Warrior putting in work. And uh, <laughs> he took a screenshot that was upside down. I, w I did want to see where it is. Hits receive. Nice combo. Fight direction. Because successful hits, 344, 344 hits, 8 minutes and 23, this fight lasted. So here we are. We have the three winners that will be contacted on Ebizone shortly. We have our announcement for the three categories of week two against Icarus. And again, in order to enter, you just have to be subscribed to my channel, record your solo in any of these three categories, and send that solo to Oliver after you have made your Ebizone account. Simple as that. So the categories are fastest unboosted solo, lowest PI solo, biggest single unboosted hit, not required to solo for the third category. Best of luck. Enjoy the KT1 torture, and I shall see you guys soon. Lighters. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about